So here we are again, off on another sailing trip. And as ever, there's a goal in mind, to circumnavigate Cape Cod. More on that later. But here we are, departing Boston with a deadline. We've got to make the Cape Cod Canal before 1.30 a.m. at the very latest, or else the tide shuts off on us, and we end up fighting more current than our motor can even handle. We motor sailed through the evening, trying to maintain maximum possible speed, headed for Sandwich at the mouth of the Cape Cod Canal. But no cliffhangers here, we made it. With about an hour to spare, in fact. As is common with transits of the canal, we flew through, we're spat out the other side, and here we are exiting Bourne. You can see all the greens of the channel marker dotted along the horizon. From here we continued on non-stop to Cuddyhunk Island, about another 22 miles away. And now that we had made the canal deadline, there was no real rush, so we continued on at about three or four knots through the night. Unfortunately, I'm completely lacking in footage from our time in Cuddyhunk, but suffice to say, we thoroughly enjoyed our time there. We sampled oysters, lobster rolls, and stunning vistas. I was never too taken with Martha's Vineyard or Nantucket, feeling a little too yachty and hoity-toity for my liking, but Cuddyhunk fit the bill nicely, unpretentious and down to earth. The next morning it was around the corner of the westernmost point of the Elizabethan Islands, Sound Pigs Reef, to continue up Vineyard Sound towards Hyannis. As you can tell, we had a great bash of vineyard sound with wind against current producing this short little chop. Eventually though, the wind and chop dissipated a little off of Falmouth, and we continued at a more leisurely pace towards Hyannis. And by the way, this is what a 30 foot cruising boat looks like with three people on board after a couple of days. Absolute mayhem. First time in a slip. Hey Gurhan, get back to work. What's it like crewing on solitude? It's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. You get to be put to work? As you might be able to tell, our visit coincided with July the 4th. Now Hyannis Marina is a beautiful spot. Affordably priced, great facilities, beautiful location, nice pool, but it did have a certain vibe. Hyannis was surprisingly busy, given that we were cruising during COVID times, and we enjoyed a wonderful meal at Embargo, one of my favorites. Hyannis, however, was not the most COVID compliant. The word super spreader was quickly coming to mind, so we quickly decided it was time to GTFO and head onwards. We started out the next morning at first light, right around 5 a.m. We were headed for Pollock Rip, which is the elbow of Cape Cod, right at the southeasternmost point. Now this route around the Cape is pretty atypical. It's actually longer from Hyannis to go outside versus through the canal to get to Provincetown. And this trip is a 75 mile route with nowhere a sailboat can safely duck into if the weather turns shitty. Needless to say, that makes this pretty ill-advised in winds due north through east, but we were due 20 knots from the southwest. Perfect. The day started out foggy with about half a mile of visibility, which is a pity because this corner of the Cape is beautiful. We 
We continued up the coast as the day progressed, and right after lunch the wind started to fill in as promised. We were in for an absolute treat. As we reached the very tip of the cape, things settled down a bit, and we even managed to see whales, albeit from a distance. As is inevitable when rounding the tip into P-Town, at some point we were going to be upwind. Unfortunately, it just so happened to coincide with, with the three and a half mile beat the minute we rounded race point. So it was on with the Iron Jenny to try and cut the misery and we made it to the entrance of the harbour within an hour. Provincetown was fabulous as ever. One of my favourite Massachusetts towns. Far more sensible behaviour than we had seen in Hyannis the night before and after a couple of lobster rolls, it was time for bed and up again the next morning to finish the trip back to Boston. There's life in Port Salad too, guys. Pretty awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the trip back from P-Town is one most Boston sailors wind up able to do in their sleep. We had the whole day at our disposal and were in no rush to make it back. So we decided to fly the Spinnaker home, even though we were only able to point as low as Salem, about 30 degrees off our course. Coming up. Flying the Spinnaker is an intricate dance maneuver between helm and trimmer. Helm comes up, trimmer sheets in for speed, then helm and trimmer slowly ease down to try and achieve a deeper course. It's one of my favourite parts of sailing. As the day wore on, we had to turn on the motor. But as we headed into Boston's harbour, we were able to shut the engine down again and sail our way back to the moor. So it was time to end the trip as we had began, by sailing back onto the mooring. We had successfully circumnavigated Cape Cod, and that was a massive check off the bucket list. Something something like, something something subscribe, something something. Thanks for watching. Yeah.